I, my wife, who's joining us via Zoom. Amen. The Bible can deal with it because it was dealing with it 
agree with this essentially. And so we're dealing with this whole issue of fellowship this morning. How do I know that I have fellowship with Jesus? How do I know that I have fellowship with Jesus? That's how John asked the question. The way that other writers have asked the question, the way that we will speak about it today, we will say, How do I know that I am a Christian? Hallelujah. Have you ever asked yourself that? How do I know that I am a Christian? How do I know that I am truly real? So John is going to answer that for us as he delves into the whole question of fellowship. When he ended last time, he ended by saying, We write these things. Sorry, verses 3, what we have seen and heard and proclaimed to you also. Right? So that you too may have fellowship with us. Amen. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father, the Son, and Christ. They say to write that our job may be complete. And so he's going to now extend from the word fellowship. When he says, I'm writing these things that you may have fellowship with us. And we explained last time the issue of our fellowship, right? We explained that fellowship is not just getting around with good food and eating and talking about cheese and pirates and, you know, just, just meeting for social gatherings and we call it fellowship. We have reduced fellowship to that, but when John was writing here, fellowship had a deeper meaning. When they were talking about fellowship, they were talking about a partnership. A partnership. Amen. It has been the, 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 the undertones of a fellowship that's so deep as in committed to a marriage. So when he's writing this, he's writing this that you might have that kind of partnership, that kind of fellowship with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the Father, but not only that, but with other Christians as well. Amen. And so when he says he's writing this, he's writing this that we may have fellowship. This word is going to be coming up a lot this morning. But he says this message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and him there is no darkness. If we say that we have fellowship, did you see that? Amen? If you say that I have fellowship with him, yet you are walking in darkness, who John doesn't beat around the bush, doesn't say maybe, I can't see, why is he being, hey, no, nah, he says you're lying. Right? I just, I, this is what he says, guys. We lie and do not practice the truth. We come to church to hear the truth. I, I hope you like the truth because that's what we're going to be bringing to you. So one of the things that I've noticed about children is that children easily believe what you say. Right? Children easily believe what you say. As one gets older, you know, it's, it's the more that you start, you start to doubt if things are really true. But I don't know if you've noticed that about children. My son always asks me when I leave, Daddy, what are you going to bring me? He's in that stage now. Every time you have her, he wants to know what's your next guy. Every time you put one, he wants to know, are you going to bring me a car? Are you going to buy me sweets? Are you going to buy me ice cream? You know? And at times, I, 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 I promise to see I'm going to buy him that car. I'm going to buy him that ice cream. Um, but there's times where then they prophesy the this thing that I said I'm gonna do, I actually don't do. Right? I forget to do it as a parent, unfortunately. Um, so we are people that are sure of what we say, but if you check the reality many times, the things that we say and the things that are in reality is not true. We say a lot of things, but in reality, the things that we do end up not being the same. How many times about the Bible? Will you be able to do this for me? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, I will do it for you. That has been my experience with especially mechanics. Uh, I have a car that is not doing very well. That needs a lot of attention, uh, unfortunately. So uh, from time to time, this car has to go to mechanics. And when you go to them, they open up the car, but check it, but check it, but check it. And then you get the problem, and they immediately tell you, no, I know what's the problem is. The problem is the calculator, right? You check the calculator, they check it, they check it. You know, yeah, right? That's the problem, yeah, it's all right. The problem is gone now. Two or three weeks later, I try to start the car and the car doesn't start. And then you see the problem, right? 
Many times you ask him, what time are you coming? Seven o'clock, Mr. Fika. Ten o'clock, I'll be there. Ten o'clock, I promise you I'll be there. The time comes, you look at the time, it's five to ten. Ten o'clock, we will not see How much does this cost? Ask someone, how much does this cost? Ah, this thing is so, so much and so much and so much. You get to check the actual price of the shop. You're like, no, this thing like this is price. It is a different price, right? How about this one? Tomorrow I'm definitely coming to church. Tomorrow I'm definitely coming to church. And then we say this thing, and then when it comes to come, time to come to church, we actually don't show up. We actually don't show up. You trust that all the time what people say and what people promise. You are disappointed. Amen. You will be disappointed because we say a lot of things that are not true. We say a lot of things that are not true. The subject which John is the same this morning in today's text. The question is, who really knows God? Now, who really knows God? To use John's language, who really has fellowship with God? Right? Who really has fellowship with God? People claim a lot of things about being in fellowship with God, but in reality, it's not true, unfortunately. John gives us a reality check. He gives us a reality check to test the claims of fellowship. Last time he gave us the reality check to test who Jesus was. He was clear that Jesus is really human, guys. John was like, I am the last remaining apostle. Ningalale what other people are saying. Ningalale le labam to our abati. Who Jesus did not really come in the flesh. Me na as John the apostle, I'm telling you, we saw him, guys. We heard him. We touched him. You know what we what what we witness. We are telling you. Speaks with authority. Remember that the false teachers were saying that Jesus didn't really come in the flesh, right? This was the common wrong teaching back in those days. They were saying Jesus did not really come in the flesh. Another claim that false teachers were making. They were saying that a person could sin and still be in fellowship with God. So the, po- the question is, is it possible to live in sin and still be in fellowship with God? That's what John is trying to answer. Another thing in the body that false teachers were saying was, that the Gnostics believed that they had a, a higher knowledge that was key to life, right? They believed that they had this higher knowledge. They didn't need to read, to, to, to read the Bible. They didn't need to believe the Bible because well, they had this higher knowledge in God that nobody else has. And so for God, well, as long as they have the knowledge, how they live doesn't matter. This was a teaching in the the same way they also did back in John's days. So John is writing to believers to address these false claims, to also give them assurance of salvation. So the question he's going to answer is, who really knows God? Who really has fellowship with him? Most important question about a person's life is not whether they are poor or they are rich. The most important question about a person's life is not because whether they are smart or educated. The most important question about a person is not whether they have a nice car, not whether they are in a relationship or that they are single. The most important question to know about a person is whether they have fellowship with Jesus or not. It's important because fellowship with Jesus goes beyond this life. It goes to the next life, right? What is the point of being popular? What is the point of being liked? What is the point of having money and you do not have fellowship with Jesus. Can help you in the next life. No one will stand up for you in the next life. We all die in different times. Don't go when they death to be in such a way that we die alone, right? You don't die with other people. You die alone. So as you die, you have to give an account as to how you live this life. How do I know that I have fellowship with God. How do I know that I am a Christian? In light of 
knowing that I can deceive myself, the way people sometimes lie, how can I tell it from for real, right? We know as a learner which we can deceive ourselves, isn't it? Our capacity for believing things that are not true is astounding, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what we can believe as people. It's unbelievable what you can tell yourself. It's unbelievable how much you can lie to yourself. How much you can lie to your own heart as a person. In fact, I heard a quote this morning that this is the generation, this is the, this is probably one of the only generations in history that gets angry by being given facts. The witness said, people don't want facts. People don't want the truth. We want to believe what is not real. So in light of that, let's go to John to give us a reality check because we know who it is. We can deceive ourselves, right? Let's go to the Word so that He gives us a reality check about whether we are in fellowship with Jesus or not. He's going to do this by asking, we'll ask two questions this morning. Lord willing, next time we'll continue with other questions. First question. First question to know if you are in fellowship with Jesus. Do I align my life with who God really is? Say that again. Do I align my life with who God really is? Where do you get it? Look at your Bibles in verse 5. And verse to the 7. Do I align my life with who God really, really is? Verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and announce to you that God is what? Light. God is light. <coughs> Are you with me? This is the message we've heard from Jesus and we are announcing to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Verse 6. If we say People are saying a lot of things here. If we say we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we what? We lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son cleanses us from us. John is reminding his viewers the message that they heard from Jesus. Later he's going to say, God is love. We hear him in 1 John chapter 4. Later he's going to say, or in John 4 he said, God is spirit, right? They that worship him must worship him. Spirit and truth. Hebrews he says he is a consuming fire. Here he says, God is light. God is light. He's taking us back to who God is. In responding to the false claims of what the false teachers were saying, John responds by taking us and explaining who this God that we serve is. The Christian life flows from what you believe about God. If you believe God to be an angry father, that will show in how you act towards others. If you believe God to be a cruel judge who loves to see us in misery, that will show in your Christian life. What you believe about God shows itself in how you live your Christian life. One of them said, the first thing that comes to mind when you think about God, that is the most important thing about you. In other words, I wanted to get to know you. One of the questions I could ask, what do you think about God? Say the first thing that comes to mind, the first thing that you say when you talk about God, that is the most important thing about you. He says almost all false doctrine comes from an understanding or improper understanding of who God is. John wants his readers to know who God is. He wants them to have a right view of God. The view is that God is love. Yes. God is spirit. Yes. Yes. But here he says, God is light. 
And in him there is no darkness at all. And fixing the error about people believing that they can live the Christian life without sinning or that knowledge is the key to life, not your moral life, John says, let me remind you guys who God is. There are so many things that we believe about God that are either not true or that are imbalanced. You share the gospel and get to the part where you, you, know, you ask uh, people if they are truly sinners. They'll answer, they'll say yes. But you ask about how sin is going to be fixed if you don't come to Jesus. If you agree that you are sinful, it means that you are going to die. If you don't have Jesus in your life as you share the gospel, you are going to die and you are going to a place called hell. Immediately somebody responds, no, no, no. God forgives. No. God forgives. No. I am not going to repeat. Does God forgive? Amen. Is God holy? Amen. And so we have believed one part of God to be true, but we have rejected the other part. How does God forgive you without you turning away from your sin and accepting Jesus in your life? He can't do that. Why? Because He's, he's merciful, but He's holy. Amen. There's only one way anyone we can come to knowledge of God, and that is through Jesus Christ. If you don't come through that way, there is no special plan for you. You're not going to make it. There's no other way that has been given unto us by, that we can be saved through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. Amen. It's like God is love, God forgives, but He's also a consuming fire. He is also light, he is also glorious, he is also holy, he is also true. That's also who God is. This is what John is correcting here. Listen to this. He says, this is the message you've heard from him, that God is light and in him there is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him, but yet walking darkness, we lie. We are lying. John is giving us a reality check as well. It's giving us a reality check to test if what we say and what is reality is actually true. You can't claim to know God if practically in your personal life you're living in darkness. You cannot claim to know God if practically in your personal life you are living in darkness. The truth is God is light and whoever claims to know God must align himself with who God really is. Question, do you align your life with who God really is? A Christian is someone who daily, habitually aligns themselves with who God is. Amen. It is unchristian to be walking in darkness and then you are told, then you say, you are judging me, stay out of my business. That's not a Christian response. A true Christian seeks to align their life with who God is. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. Strive for perfection. Jesus also said, or is it Paul who said, We must keep on striving for perfection? A true Christian is constantly around other Christians and around the world of God so that they so that what they say can be tested to see if it's in reality of the way they live. Let me say that again. A true Christian is around the word of God, is around other Christians, so that they are constantly tested. One of the reasons for fellowship is that you are constantly tested whether what you say is actually what is happening. Because like I said, we have a, a big capacity to deceive ourselves. We can think by ourselves that we are fine. We can think by ourselves. We look at ourselves and we can rationalize as ourselves into being fine. Amen. A true Christian knows that they can deceive themselves. So they put themselves under the light of God's word. The light of other Christians so that they can adjust what they think they are. What they say they are to who they really are. Amen. That's what you think you are. That's what you say you are. And that's and there's also where you, what you truly are. 
This is why the word of God is so important because it's the only book in the world that tells us the truth about ourselves. Take away this book, we are going to believe lies about who we are. John says, the message they heard from Jesus is that, hey, Mina, let me tell you about this man upstairs. He is light and there is no darkness at all. Let me tell you about this man. This man is light. That's the message we heard. I don't know what y'all are saying, but the message we heard from Jesus is that God is light and in him there is no darkness. He does not conform to us. We conform to his standards. If you're walking in darkness and you claim to be Christian, John says you lie. John is not sure who it is. If somebody comes and asks you, this is what I'm doing, this is what I do. What do you think? And as a Christian, you always find yourself. I, 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 I don't know. I, well, what can I say? John says, you can quote the Bible. John says, if you claim to walk in darkness, you claim to be the light of light. That's not judging, that's just what it says. To align yourself with Him, you need to be walking in the light. He does not conform to us, we conform to Him. There is a standard that has been set about who a Christian really is. I need to say that again, but there is a standard that has been set by the Word of God about who a Christian really is. Hashtag your work matters. Your work matters with God. Light allows you to see what you could not see in the darkness, isn't it? When you're in the darkness, there's no clarity, there's no peace, there's no direction. But as soon as you switch on the light, everything is clear. Everything is clear. How do I know if I have fellowship with Jesus and his church? Question, do I align my life with who God is? Or do I believe my own life, who I think I am? There's so many lies that we believe about who we think we are. I go to church, and therefore that makes me to be in fellowship with God. That's what people are saying. John says, if we say, if we say, if we say we are in fellowship, but in reality, walking down this line. A lot of people are saying, you know, people tell me I'm a nice person. You, you tell them about Christ, and I mean, they get Christian says, no, I'm a nice person. I'm a good person. All right? But I'm in fellowship with Jesus. Do you know Jesus? I have parents who are Christian and therefore that makes me to be the light. Question, do I align my life with who God is? Second, second question. Do I align my life with who God is? Second question, do I daily habitually confess and repent of sin? Do I daily habitually confess and repent of sin? Where do you get it? Look at the seed. Look at the seed. The test of fellowship. If we say that we have no sin, we are what? We, we are what? Deceiving ourselves. And the truth is not in us. So John, 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 if he was to put this on Twitter, uh, John would, would, would be in trouble because he would be thought of as very judgmental. He says you deceive in yourself and the truth is not in you. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and righteous so that he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. I remember asking a pastor last year a question of whether he sins or not. Do you sin? The answer came, he said, no. He was around the meat last year. He said, no, this year I'm not sin. <laughs> yes, this year I am not sin. This is the pastor. And that conversation was very clear. There's a wrong understanding of sin. There's a wrong understanding of who Sin is a grown sin to the point where it doesn't affect you. 
sins for people in the first dimension. Then yeah, it's come to a point, doesn't say no. My response was, can I ask your wife, can you just have time with your wife and ask her the same question and see if she's going to say the same thing if you don't say Can you just move away? Let's just talk to her and see if you don't say As I said, another false claim that false teachers were making was that they were not affected by sin anymore. That's why I said this stuff is not new. They were claiming that, that they're not affected by sin anymore. Sin was, was only affecting the the ones without knowledge, the ones that are not initialized. But you know, we have come to this higher knowledge where we're not affected by sin anymore. John exposes another thing about those that are Christians. They recognize their sinfulness and they confess it and repent of it. David was the most perfect of all kings, was not the most perfect of all kings. But one thing about him is that he really confessed his sin and sought to make sure that there is nothing that others can put a blame in his life. Be gracious to me, Psalm 51. Oh God, according to your faithfulness, according to the greatness of your compassion, wipe away my wrongdoings, wash me thoroughly from my guilt, cleanse me from my sin, for I know, I know my wrongdoings. David knew himself. He knew that he was a sinner. And my sin is constantly before me. Against you, you only have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. He's not blaming God for his sin. It's like, I have sinned. Like, I get it. You are right that you have judged me as Nathan told me my sin. Behold, I was brought forth in, in guilt. And in sin, my mother concealed me. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being. The point is God... I should say the point is David really knew his sin. And when he confessed it, God was glorified. God was glorified. This is the posture of a true Christian. Broken. Broken. And contrite heart. Boasting and pride is not, it's not, that's not, it's not what makes up a Christian. We've broken people like we we victorious. Amen. In Jesus. But it's a, it's a broken bridge because you know for it, like we didn't do anything to deserve it. Amen. It is not Christian to defend your sin and make excuses for it. It's not Christian. Corrie ten Boom said, the blood of Jesus never cleansed an excuse. Do I habitually daily repent of sin? Want to know if you're truly in fellowship with God? You want to know if you're truly a Christian? Do you daily habitually repent of your sin? Or are you so self-righteous that you've gotten to a place where other people are sinful but we're not right? Daniel chapter 9 verse 20 while I was still speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel presenting my plea before the Lord God on behalf of the holy mountain of God Luke chapter 5 verse 8 Peter himself said to the Lord Lord depart from me for I am a sinful man it was the prodigal in Luke chapter 15 verse 18 who said I will get up go to my father and say to my father father I have sinned against heaven and in your sight there was the text collector, Luke 18, verse 13. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. It is a trustworthy statement, deserving full acceptance, that Christ came into the world to save sinners among whom I am chief. The Apostle Paul. I was going to read Psalm 38 as well, but I'll just read verse 18. It says, For I admit my guilt. I am full of anxiety because of my sin. Right? Repenting, confessing, sin habitually is part of what it means to be I know some have been confronted by sin and have rationalized it instead of repenting. Some refuse to repent of sin. Some people defend their sin. That's the, even the highest 
the highest one that you don't understand. People defending fact it's wrong, like the Bible says it's there, and we, it's there, it's clear, but but somehow because of our ability to deceive ourselves, we make it okay. How do you know if you have fellowship? Are you aligning yourself to who God is? Do you live a life of confessing and repenting of sin? But I love that because then the question is, but I, 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 I try, I try, I try, but I keep on failing. Let me look at your sin. But if you walk in the light, right? As he is something the light, we have fellowship with one another in the what? The blood of the blood of Jesus. Can you say the blood of Jesus? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Cleanses us from our sin. Right? So I can't keep you in my own strength, right? But if you hear this one and you say, hey, I I, I resonate with that. I, I I sin bothers me. You know, I I I strive to walk in holiness, but there's times when I fall, and there's times when I rise up. You know what I'm gonna say? Welcome to the club. Right? Right? If we say we have no sin, we lie. So we know that sinless, nobody's trying to make themselves perfect here, right? Here's the question. Do I live a life of confessing and repenting of sin? That's the question. Do you repent of it now when it is there? Right? So one thing to defend it, it's another thing to confess it and repent of it. Amen. And when you they do that, the Bible says the blood of Jesus is son. That's the gospel. Amen. That's how the gospel helps us. It helps us, it gives us an opportunity for us to be able to come back to God. So because of Jesus, you are able to have fellowship with God. Because of Jesus, you are able to walk with God without guilt. Because of Jesus, you can then walk with victory. Amen. And so if you are there, you don't have to allow Satan to be able to condemn you. Amen. Because of what? The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. But the blood of Jesus applies to who? Those who are confessing, repenting, habitually of sin. Not those who are living in sin without repentance. You missed that. There's a difference between somebody who's a Christian and who falls and sins and repents versus somebody who's living habitually in sin without any repentance and without any feeling of guilt. There's a difference. John is going to get into this later in John chapter 2 when he talks about my children are right that you, you may not sin. Right? But if anybody sins with an adult, he's going to say this, that whoever keeps on sinning does not know God. So there's a difference between those that are walking in fellowship with Jesus and those that are walking in rebellion without repenting of us, without confessing sin. It is, it is a problem when as a Christian you keep on because this is a problem at times you recognize the sin but you don't depend on it prepare to turn it away deal with it Take away the laptop. She's a different route. Do something so that you do not keep on sin. Speak to Christians. Because you can get into this mode of confessing, 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 but it's like nobody's getting victory, you're just confessing. No, Jesus has bought victory for us. We don't have to be defeated. No. And so we don't use first John 1 9 to say. Every time we say, oh yeah, no, if I confess my sins, I'm going to forgive you. So you use that as a, as a thing to say, I'm going to keep doing it because he's going to forgive you. We'll continue to ask more questions next week. But I thank Jesus for the blood. Amen? Praise Jesus for the blood. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood that cleanses us. Jesus, that makes us wise, Lord. Thank you. 
Oh, oh, oh. 